The most important thing that I'll say tonight, and we're in tonight almost, is thank you. Thank you to the people that are here. Thank you to the people that might watch this on television and care enough to stay with it. Thank you to the people that are going to vote on May 6th. I'm Carl Nuttower. I'm a city councilman in Asheville. I'm a father, a grandfather, a husband. I'm a real conservative. I'm a Christian. I'm a veteran. I have a courage button. I will not say anything to get elected. I will not attempt to buy a seat in Congress. And I will not betray my values or your values to get elected. What I will do is work with every ounce of energy I have in my heart, body, mind, and spirit to run a passionate campaign and recapture the 11th district seat. What I will do is always put principles above party, power, or popularity. Because I believe it is in principles, our principles, that we will recapture America's future. The final thing I'll do is step up to the level necessary to unite and uplift the Republican Party in Western North Carolina and to reach across the aisle to those principled Democrats and independents who are looking for something different, something better, and give them an answer. Thank you again for being here. Tonight. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks for the time and all the effort you put this together. It's been a pleasure to be here today to hear so many Republicans talk about the future of this party and the future of this country with such passion and commitment. I want to talk about the vision that the founders had as a start point. Because I think before we can talk about issues, we have to have a frame of reference to put them in. When the 55 people that wrote the Constitution met in, 18, in 1787, they, they had a vision. And their vision was based on their faith in the Almighty and then their faith in us. And they wrote a constitution that reflected that vision. That constitution gives us the freedom to worship whoever we want, in whatever way we want. It gives us really the, a feeling of hope that we can do whatever it is we're called to do, whatever it is we're called to be. So that constitution is the most important document ever written on the face of the earth for a government. It allows us to be Americans. It allows us to know what freedom and democracy are all about. It gives us a certain responsibility to promote freedom and democracy around the world. And the men and women of this country have been doing that since day one, even to the point of the ultimate sacrifice on many thousands of people. Today, we're in another situation that require Americans to fight and die. But it's not like, unlike other crises, times of crises in our country. We've faced many crises before, and we've always risen to the challenge. But there's something going on in our country that's very unsettling for all Americans, I believe, because most of us believe that our government has abandoned us in the interest of their own priorities, in the interest of the priorities of lobby groups and special interest groups, and yes, even corporate America, to the exclusion of the vision of the founders. And I think it's time we find somebody that understands what the vision of the founders is, and somebody that has the background to work in Congress on the basis of real world experience. And I believe that my military background, my business background, my service in nonprofits, and my service to the party qualify me to do that. Today is no different in the times of America where we faced crisis in the past. It's up to us to decide what the future of this country is. And if we Republicans want to control the future of this country, and we know surely we need to, all we have to do is come together and do that at every level. And so I ask for your consideration as your future congressman. And if you elect me, what you'll get is a servant leader 
because I believe that politics is about people, and I think that that's what this election is all about as well. Thank you. My name is John Armour, A-R-M-O-R, -R, and I'm running for Congress. And I'm going to begin with words that are far older and better than anything that comes from me. These words were written in December 1776. They were read by order of General Washington to his remaining able troops before they crossed the Delaware at night in a snowstorm to attack the Hessians at Trenton. And if they had lost that battle, the cause of America was lost. That's how important these words are. They were written by Thomas Paine. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. The United States has always been under attack from its beginning when it barely survived, and it is under attack today, but not so much militarily. There is no power on earth that can destroy us militarily. Not now, anyway. We have to keep our eye on China in another 50 years. But there are powers, and some of them inside the United States, which can harm us very seriously. The framers of our Constitution looked at the history of governments and nations, and they saw that they fell to attack from outside, but more often they fell to dry rot inside. When Rome fell to the Visigoths, Rome had already failed as a civilization that had had dry rot for a hundred years. Are we experiencing the same thing in the United States today? I suggest that we are. Now, Heath Schuller represented himself as a conservative and he tricked people with that claim. He is not. His work in Congress demonstrates that. But now he is alleging the same thing again. You need to nominate someone who will take seriously the oath of office that every member of Congress swears to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. That is what I've been doing with my life since I was 20 years old. Now, Heath Shuler is obviously a pretense because, for instance, his SAVE Act was killed by Nancy Pelosi. And who elected Nancy Pelosi? It was Heath Shuler. But in order to defeat him now in his sophomore year, which is when incumbents are most vulnerable, you cannot nominate someone who is weak on the Constitution or weak on immigration or weak on dealing with terrorist threats to the United States. And I suggest that there is one possibility on this stage that goes in that direction and I suggest it would be a terrible mistake to put that kind of candidate up against Heath Shuler. You can win this, you should win this. My name is John Arnold. The next segment are questions from the panelists, and I will go first, uh, and I'll start, I think we'll do one question each, of any candidate that comes to mind until we get all three. You have up to three minutes to respond. Please, you do not have to take three minutes to respond. Uh, I'll address this to uh, Carl Mumpauer. Uh, Carl, please explain how pandering and voting the will of your constituents might be different. In your campaign, you said you will not pander, and um, I I'm concerned as to exactly how that you would distinguish that from understanding what your constituents might want you to vote when you're elected. Thank you for the question. I'm reminded of the country western song, you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. The opinions of voters fluctuate like the wind. The principles that we have voted upon, discussed, voted upon, and choose to uphold do not. And when I talk about principles, I'm not just talking about mine, I'm talking about ours. I'm talking about the principles of the Republican Party. And that's where I put my eyes. And those principles guide my votes. I'm reminded, if I, if I may, I'll, I'll bring Jesus into the room with us. He never diverted from his principles. Under almost constant and persistent pressure, he kept his eye on his commitments. 
did not, and did not blow it with the wind. And I will not do that. I will not place my popularity and other things above the, above the principles that I've committed myself to uphold. Thank you.